What's up, nonprofit filmmakers? These days, and by that I mean tech-heavy, social media dominant, mostly remote working, modern times that we live in, you've got to not only use video in your organization for your cause, but you often have to be in video for said organization or cause. This hard truth may not drive well with those of you who are camera shy or cringe at the sight of yourself in your daily Zoom meeting, but fears be hush, because in this episode of The Nonprofit Filmmaker, you'll learn exactly how to prepare yourself to look and feel your best before you hit record. Let's start with looking your best on camera, because by nature, we're all a little vain. There are certain things you want to avoid wearing on camera. Light pastel colors or beige can really wash you out. Bright white can confuse the camera, as it'll expose for your shirt if you're shooting in an auto mode, and that won't make your face look its best. Side note, learn how to shoot in a manual mode by watching season one, episode two. And don't wear dark black. Yes, I know black is slimming and everyone loves wearing black, but it can add some unsightly shadows to your face and no one wants that. In addition to these bad color choices, you want to avoid really tight patterns. They sort of vibrate on camera or distracting logos, which can be, well, distracting to your viewer. What you do want to wear are bright, solid colors. Look up jewel tones on Google and pick one of those. Or if you have a shirt that gets a ton of, oh wow, that color looks great on you every time you wear it, then that's your shirt. Some subtle patterns are okay, like this bird shirt that I wear in almost all of my videos. Speaking of that, you wanna show off your style too. It's no secret that I love birds, hence my bird shirt. So don't be afraid to be you, or at least give the viewers a taste of you. And as far as jewelry goes, if that's your style, then wear it. Just avoid anything that's gonna be really distracting, like giant glittery earrings, or anything that's gonna be loud. If you have a necklace that's like always clinking against your lavalier microphone, the sound is gonna drive your viewers crazy. And finally, makeup. You may think you need to go all out and wear a ton of makeup, but a more natural look is actually generally better. Think about how you look on a day-to-day -day basis and aim for that. People wanna see other real, authentic people. A little powder can help men and women to cut down on some of the shine that's caused by the lights, but, uh, but I don't actually wear any, because I don't shine. Now that you've chosen your outfit and laid it out like it's the first day of ninth grade, let's talk about prepping yourself to be on camera. First, you've got to know what you're gonna say. No one wants to watch you stammer and stutter your way through your video. This doesn't have to be like a whole memorized script or anything. I'd actually recommend using a teleprompter app if you're gonna present word for word. At least write out the bullet points. You'll feel better about yourself if you've prepared and therefore you'll present better. Additionally, it'll keep your video shorter. You won't be repeating yourself, but rather you'll be getting right to the point. And viewers appreciate that kind of concise content because you know they got a lot of other videos to watch in their feed. Once you've got your content, practice. Give, Give it several runs, runs in, in front, front of the, of the mirror. mirror. Give it several runs in front of the mirror. Or even better, in front of a friend or a coworker. Ask for feedback. See if you can improve your content or your presentation. All right, so you're dressed, you're prepped, it's shoot time. In the minutes before recording, take a second to loosen up. Dance, jump around, shake your arms and legs spastically, laugh at yourself. If you're a bag of nerves, that's gonna show up on camera. So shake those nerves out. The time has come, the time is now. Hit record and your presentation will forever be stamped on history. <laughs> just kidding. The cool thing about uh, non-live recording is you don't have to do it all in one take. After your first take, just watch it back. Adjust anything you need to, like lighting or microphone placement. Give yourself some feedback and then do another take, or two, or five. You'll likely get your best takes near the end because you've practiced and you're relaxed. And you're on a roll. But don't go overboard. Recording all day long for a one minute video will drive you crazy and your post person crazy. And my final tip, be in more videos. The more you do it, the easier it gets and the more comfortable you'll appear and lo and behold, the more you'll enjoy the process. Hey, that'll do it for me today. Make sure to subscribe for our other amazing filmmaking tips and tricks, and we will see you in the next one.